Are you tired of the typical Mazab to Andalusia campaign for the Third Way achievement? Well today I'll show you how to get the Third Way achievement as the other Ibadi nation, Oman. I will also show you how to form the Mughals as Oman, giving us access to the Mughals' overpowered national ideas and government form that would make getting the Third Way achievement much easier. Hello everyone, and welcome to the first of a two-part video series where I will explain how to set yourself up for the Third Way achievement as Oman by forming the Mughals. Let's begin. Starting with the estates, give plus 1 monthly military points to the nobility as well as supremacy over the crown and plus 10 loyalty. We'll save a slot for strong duchies later in the game. For the automat, give plus 1 monthly admin points, expansion celery, and plus 10 loyalty. Before we give out the privileges to the burghers, set the development cost edict in your state and develop Nizwa once. Then give the burghers plus 1 monthly diplo points, plus 10 loyalty, and the prestige. Give the Dimi promoted Dimi nobility. Finally, sell your land and then seize it. Send a merchant to transfer power from Gujarat. Set Hormuz as a rival and send a diplomat to begin building a spy network on them. Like the video, please. Make both your ruler a general and recruit one with 50 mil points. The more siege, if any, the better. Recruit the free company. And once it's deployed, you can take both the generic Build to Force Limit mission and the Omani Prepare for War mission. Both give plus 5% morale each. Combined with the Expansionist Zealotry privilege, this gives us plus 15% morale of armies at the start of the game, equivalent to the second idea from Defensive. However, we can keep going. Now this is RNG, but if you get a Morale of Armies advisor, this will give you plus 10% morale for a total of plus 25% morale that we otherwise wouldn't have. This advisor isn't needed but amazing if you're lucky enough to get it. Regardless, if it weren't obvious, our war against Hormuz will be minimally challenging. Nevertheless, set your national focus to mill and take any skill 1 mill advisor. We'll now wait until December 12th to declare war on Hormuz. Once we can declare war, we'll do so setting a Sharqiyya as the war goal with the Reconquest CB. Send the free company to siege random provinces when you can and have your main army besiege Masqat. You'll have to be a little smart in this war by picking off small stacks when you can and baiting Hormuz's army multiple times throughout the war. But even if you take bad battles then you should have no issue with Hormuz whatsoever because, as I mentioned previously, you should be fighting with a morale advantage of at least 15%. You may want to try and siege Hormuz's ally if you get impatient, like I did, forcing them into a white piece. After they're dealt with, despite not occupying Hormuz's capital, we can still demand a full annexation and we will. After this point, I want to state that due to the RNG of Alliance Networks, every game will look different. Yas might be allied to Ajam, Hasa might ally Ming. Because of this, you should take wars when you can and expand into your neighbors when you're confident you can beat them and their allies. I will follow my game from here to give you an idea of how to fight these next few wars. So Yas was only allied to Nejd. If this happens to you, just get a claim and full annex them. Vassalize Nejd as well. If Yas has a strong ally, then your second war should be against Mara or Hasa. After Yas, it's time to look into securing an alliance with the Ottomans. Send a diplomat to begin improving relations, say your attitude towards the Mamluks is threatened, scornfully insult them, and hire a diplo rep advisor if you can. You also want to royal marry the Ottomans if you can do that before securing the alliance. I'm not sure if you can always secure the Ottoman alliance like this because you aren't Sunni, but if not, then just wait 10 or 20 more years. By then you should have a strong army, navy, and more development and allying them should be easier. The Ottomans will be a crucial ally to get if you can. Move your capital to Masqat. It will cost 200 admin points but will be well worth it. We'll begin developing the renaissance shortly. You should not station your armies on your recent conquests because that lowers the unrest. We want these rebellions to fire so we can kill them quickly and lower the autonomy. Also at this point I had a nasty hug box around me. Hassa was allied to Baluchistan, and Baluchistan was allied to Mara and the Timurids. Though I think this is the worst case scenario for alliances, so I'll show you how I navigated through this mess and you should have no problems regardless of your RNG. I got a claim on Hassa and declared war. They were allied to Baluchistan, so I used that opportunity to annul all of their alliances. Baluchistan is going to be our future expansion route to form the Mughals if it weren't obvious. This war was honestly a little tricky, I had to focus on my armies a lot and snipe off small stacks like in the Hormuz war. I sent off some troops to siege Baluchistan's fort, and when I got enough war score, I pieced out breaking all of their alliances. Hassa was promptly, fully annexed into the Omani Emirate. 
During this time, you'll also be sending off spare monarch points to develop Muscat to spawn the Renaissance. You want to wait on Tech 4 for both Admin and Diplo, but stay up to date with Miltech. It's usually not possible to one-shot it, so it will be a small trickle until it eventually spawns. Right after finishing up Hasa, the Ottomans finally turned friendly, so I allied them, of course. This was a very big win as I honestly didn't expect them to ally me, but they did. And you should be able to as well if you scornfully insult the Mamluks, improve relations, and annex Hasa. Not to waste any time, I declared war on Shamar for Nejd's claims there. They were only allied to Makuria and Yemen, so this was my first chill war. You want to feed all of Arabia to your vassal as it's low dev land anyway, and it's not in our interest for forming the Mughals. And while waiting for Shamar to accept full annexation, I also declared war on Mushasha and decided to release Basra. With two vassals, you can now get the strong duchy's privilege. Now, I decided to chill for a bit. I hadn't even taken Admin Tech 4 to spawn the Renaissance, so I was incredibly behind on Admin and Diplo. I got Admin and Diplo advisors in Stay at Peace, slowly converting provinces to Ibadi with the help of the Enforced Religious Unity Edict, and crushed rebellions. My truce with Baluchistan didn't end for another 5 years anyway, and I decided to shift focus to finally conquering Indian provinces there after the truce, as I had a pretty strong base in Eastern Arabia now. So the next few years are honestly quite boring. I'm just waiting for my monarch points to grow so I can catch up on my admin and diplotech, but trust me, being patient will pay off. As soon as our truce with Baluchistan is over, our nation will immediately conquer their land and begin the conquest of India. Once you get Diplotech 4 and have spare cash, you should build marketplaces in your centers of trade and particularly Muscat. Thanks to an event, I got a discounted skill to advisor that I could afford and so I took him. He also turned out to be a missionary strength guy, so that was helpful with converting my new conquests to Ibadi. This is also the time you want to start building transports. By this time, I had 9 galleys and spent all my spare cash on transports. This fleet will be critical in landing our army on the shores of Baluchistan in a few years' time. So this was the Omani Emirate 20 years after the initial reconquest against Hormuz. The Emirate had vassals in the Sheikhdom of Nejd and the Emirate of Basra, as well as having an alliance in the Ottoman Empire. You can turn down your army maintenance to chill if you want, or if you really want to be fighting, you can see about feeding Dawesur to your vassal Nejd. Regardless, you should begin improving relations with Nejd to annex them, and don't forget to build a spy network on Baluchistan for claims. Whenever a rebellion pops up, you'll of course have to spend full maintenance and defeat the rebels. And you really should convert your provinces if you aren't. Remember, the third way requires all Sunni and Shia provinces to be converted to Ibadi. After crushing the Hasili's uprising, the armies of Oman finally landed on the shores of Baluchistan on September the 24th, 1467. The emir also realized he could just go around with Timurid military access, but come on, that makes the story less dramatic. Around this time, you should make sure to not have your ruler be leading as a general. You lose two stab if your ruler dies when commanding an army, and I did so because of negligence. This is especially a big deal as admin points are extremely valuable and will only increase in value to you. Because of this, you should also switch your national focus to admin by now. Once Quetta, the Baluchistani capital fell, the entire state was incorporated into the Omani Emirates, and very nicely too. After the war, I also began integrating Nejd. I probably would have fed them De Wester before doing so, but they allied the Mamluks and the land is so little in development that it honestly doesn't matter too much. Now at this point, your future expansion in India may be hard as there are also alliance chains, but they're also much more powerful. Because of this, I was looking for an ally in India and Bahmanis was my best bet. They weren't near northern India, were very large, and we had a mutual rivalry in Vijayanagar, which meant we were naturally friends anyway. So I sent a diplomat to improve relations and eventually allied them. But in the short term, because of these strong alliances, I decided to focus my attention elsewhere. I declared war on QQ to release Iraq, and after QQ was firmly taught a lesson, Oman conquered and released the emirate of Iraq. What sect were they? Sunni. What school were they? Ja'fari. For idea groups, I recommend opening with Innovative. Why, you may ask? Lower tech cost and innovativeness. After Innovative, I suggest taking Offensive, Religious, and Influence in that order. So to form the Mughals, we need to be in the Iranian culture group, and Afghan is the best culture for us to switch to, because of its proximity and its development. In the second part of this guide, we'll cover the Indian conquests and Afghani culture switch. But for now, sadly, the story of our sublime Ibadi emirate will come to a close. I hope you enjoyed this guide, and I hope it helps you out if you choose to get the third way achievement as Oman. If you enjoyed it, then please like the video, and I'll see you next time.